and it's, it's correct. We know that. I'm sorry. It's going to make headlines, but it's correct. I'm not a fan of the NCAA. Uh, I love watching March Madness. I think that's that's incredible. I'm not a fan of how they how the kids don't uh, don't benefit from none of this. NCAA and uh, amateur sports been corrupt for so long. I mean, we we all know that. Uh, whether you get caught doing it or not, uh, it, it is what it is. All right, so you know the deal. We got NBA stars there that young kids look up to blasting the NCAA because of its latest scandal. Max, how much are these comments going to damage the NCAA down the stretch? They could bring the whole NCAA down. The NCAA does not have to exist. You know, it doesn't have to exist just because it's been around for a while. It reminds me of the children's story, The Emperor's New Clothes. Do you guys remember that? The Emperor's looking for a new suit of clothes and and some clever tailor decides to pretend that he made him a suit of clothes. He didn't actually do anything. And then he's like, yeah, these are beautiful, right? Like, and so the emperor thinks there must be something wrong with me if he's telling me they're so good. And everyone who sees them is thinking, well, the emperor is saying he's dressed. He's really naked. They must be beautiful. There must be something wrong with my eyes since everyone else agrees. Maybe I don't understand this. And everyone tells him how great he looks in his new clothes. He's standing there butt naked until some little kid comes by and says, the emperor has no clothes. And now everyone feels brave enough to laugh and to admit the truth, right? Well, it doesn't matter that Jay Billis has been leading the charge as a former player in, in the NCAA, in, in college basketball, and college basketball expert, an attorney, that he's been on this forever, right? Or that people like me, it doesn't matter how many final takes I write about this, it's not going to resonate the same way as when LeBron James says it's a corrupt organization. Not that he's a kid, but in this metaphor, he's the kid who can point and say, the emperor has no clothes. And now everyone else can jump on the, and say, oh my God, right. And the NCAA is seen in the naked truth for the, na you know, nakedly for the organization that they actually are. This can be irrevocably damaging to the NCAA. Well, listen, I, thought, I completely agree with you. And, and, and let's understand something here. In 2011, I believe, the NCAA reached what was, uh, what was like a $10.8 billion deal with CBS and TNT uh, uh, through 2024, I, I, if I remember correctly, okay? So what you're talking about is $10.8 billion. But somehow, some way, you're saying you don't need to pay players. You're definitely paying yourself. I think that if you look at a president of a university... If you look at an athletic director, certainly in the case of the coaches and others, you would see individuals getting raises and making sure that they're able to profit off of the revenue that, their respect, that the respective sports are generating. It's not equal because Drexel ain't getting what Alabama gets if it's talking about football or, you know, Villanova isn't getting the same as what, you know, or St. Joe's even in Philadelphia or St. John's in New York. We understand that. But the reality is that despite the discrepancy, there's so much money. And yet in the same breath, you're so restrictive towards these young athletes that we've been, you know, bloviating about the hypocrisy of the NCAA and amateurism for so, so very long. When you have players like Carmelo who did, who chose not to go to college or Kobe Bryant who chose not to go to college well, Carmelo or Carmelo went for Anthony one year. or Carmelo Anthony who went for one year and won a national championship at Syracuse and what have you. When you hear them talking about it, particularly in today's generation with the advent of social media and the fact that you get to speak directly to so many members of our youth without needing the media to communicate for you and them having that level of access to whatever your opinions may be. You can bring, like Max said, you can bring the whole, you can bring the NCAA down to its knees because what you're doing is highlighting the flagrant hypocrisy and you're getting it from individuals who the, who the youth of America looks to for advice and for counsel in certain regards and respects. That cannot be ignored, the kind of impact that can, end up, that can end up being had with all of this. It cannot be ignored, and I would take it very, very seriously because this is perhaps the most damning in terms of, 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 just, of just commentary and what have you that has been directed by the, towards the NCAA in quite a long time. It's one thing for us to speak about it, even a great Jay Billis to speak about it, but when you've got LeBron mm -hmm. and Melo and others talking about you like you're a bunch of crooks, 
That is a problem for an NCAA who needs these players to come into their stable so they could exploit them and profit off of them with these television right. deals. You have to ask who's look. It's a, the whole thing is kind of is a corrupt uh, institution, right? The question is who is the prime mover unmoved? Who's the prime sinner unmoved? Who's the first, who sets it off? It's the NCAA that's regulating it now. Even and, and they've been so greedy about it in terms of the way they've tried to control student athletes' lives and limit their access to any money at all. I even could understand, and this is what happens when 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 people or organizations are not out in front of things, right? When they're when they're so foolhardy, don't, they don't see broad, you know, longer horizons, and they're just worried about their short-term incentives and their short-term bottom line. The NCAA could have corrected a lot of this stuff without all this pressure. They could have said, "Look, when you're in our tournament, you can't get paid because you're a student athlete and you're amateur and whatever else." And they could sell that amateurism back to the audience, which is what they do. Stephen A. As I say, it is a professional organization because every single person gets paid, including you and me and everyone talking about it. Everyone makes money except for the student athletes. But even then, they could have kept that system in place had they not been so damn greedy and short-sighted because they could have said, okay, while you're in this tournament, you're not profiting directly. Why do you need to reach into the kids' lives and see if it, look under every uh, uh, stone, check under anything? Oh, are you profiting off of your autograph? Did someone once give you a, a, a piece of cake and a cup of coffee at a coffee shop that they paid for? What is this need to control every level of their lives as though their amateur status in your tournament depends on them ever making a dime from anyone else, particularly when so many of them are from desperate backgrounds and are trying to not only improve their lives, but just trying to survive when, you know, poverty means when you wake up into crisis every single day, you know, the car breaks down. How are you going to get to work, to school, to, to, to pay the rent like every so so people, a lot of these athletes are in crisis mode when they get to college. And yet and then, and then the NCAA says has the nerve after setting up that system to wag their finger. Very bad. You are corrupt. You're doing something bad. It's outrageous. They could have corrected this despair despicable behavior at any time up until this point, and they were short-sighted and greedy, and as a result, the whole thing may now come tumbling down. Yeah. Well, they were definitely greedy. The only thing that I'd like to say, Max, I'm very shocked that you're such an expert on poverty. My man, you're, you're evolving, sir. You're evolving. LeBron, what, sir. What do you think my people come from, Stephen A? <laughs> I what do you got think you. my people come I, from? I didn't say your people. I said you. <laughs> no, LeBron, I'm, I'm all right. I've always been doing all right. I ain't mad message. at you. I appreciate it. Me I ain't, ain't a so. It's a compliment. Me neither. All right. All right. After the break, John's Bones Jones in trouble yet again. Find out why this could spell the end for maybe the greatest fighter in UFC history.